and welcome to a very unexpected Blu-ray update video for April of 2019 and it's more of an unboxing than an update kind of both at the same time I suppose and unexpected because I wasn't planning on really buying anything and then this um, this opportunity came up uh, a good friend of mine Chili Palmer has opened up a website called Chili and uh, he's selling DVDs and Blu-rays over there, he's, he's selling streaming links over there. Uh, it's a very suspect website because I'd never heard of it before and suddenly everyone on the Blu-ray.com forums were talking about it. Graham at Man V Film, my, my very close personal enabler, was uh, telling me about Chili and he was just ordering stuff like it. there was no tomorrow basically. And I thought, you know what, the, the website's really just janky and just like really hard to navigate, I'm not going to bother. But it was this 50% off offer and, and titles were coming in, they were going out and it was just all over the place and I was watching the forums and then you know the deal was coming to an end and I thought you know what, I'll have a look. Let's actually try and, and put the time in and see if there's anything worth getting in this 50% off deal uh, and if I can save a lot of money uh, and I ended up doing just that. So I essentially did an offer it wasn't really an offer, it was 50% off everything. Everything. So I was just looking for the best prices, the best savings, things like that. Uh, so the way that it worked out, I ordered 10 Blu-rays from Chile. And I uh, got my, my nice squeaky chair in the, in the background there. Uh, 10 Blu-rays from Chile, and uh, the way it worked out, I would say if I was to average, average it all out, it would be £5 per title. Which is pretty damn good. So... Uh, Considering some of the things in here, some of them, uh, there's one or two that are worth around £5, but the others I, I've made quite a good saving on. And there's quite a selection of stuff in here, so let's have a look at this box of chili. And the ten very different titles that I picked. So the first one we have is a film from 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die book. And I'm really excited about this particular Blu-ray because it has a really cool bonus feature. Uh, which I'll get to in just a second, but it is the 1980s, I want to say. Surely it's like really late 80s. Doesn't say on the back. It really bugs me when it doesn't say on the back. I I'm pretty sure it's really late 80s, otherwise very early 90s. Pretty woman uh, walking down the street squeaking like my chair. Really good film. I uh, watched it a few years ago for the Thousand One Movies um, series. Never got around to reviewing it but I really liked it, and it's definitely a film I'd like to own. I really like Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, and they have some great chemistry here. I had seen and kind of grown up with Runaway Bride, which I really like, but I wanted to kind of add this to the collection because I really like it. And the bonus feature, this is like really... I, I, I can't believe I hadn't heard of this before, but uh, we'll see if the camera will focus on this. But uh, on the, the bonus features there under the listings, if you can see, I'll move my head so you can see it. Hopefully it will focus... Bonus feature is the feature film itself. Yes. An amazing bonus feature. You get the entire movie to watch whenever you want. This is a fantastic bonus feature, not to mention the seamless, seamless menus. You can barely tell the difference. It's, uh, so yeah, some great special features on this one. Uh, next up, we have a film I don't want to say anything about. There can be only one. Maybe this is a film that I watch and talk about in great detail in 24-hour movie Marathon 8, The Last Marathon. But I, I had to, to buy this and kind of own it after seeing it in the marathon, which kind of gives away what I thought of the film. I hadn't seen it before properly. This has new interviews with the director and with Christopher Lambert, who plays Connor McLeod. There's a two-hour making-of documentary and audio commentary with the director. This is the 30th anniversary edition, and apparently a new transfer too. So yeah, I really had to add that one to the collection after I watched it in uh, this year's marathon which will be coming out at some point this year. This is another one to just go along with the recent uh, Jackie Chan obsession it is Rumble in the Bronx. Uh, haven't seen it, don't know anything about it, uh, I'm assuming it's I mean Miramax so it's got to be one of his American made films. Uh, oh it's, it's a Raymond Chow Golden Harvest production okay I, maybe I'm not too sure actually uh, obviously, a Hong Kong cop who gets more than he bargained for when he visits relatives in a crime-ridden section of New York. So I don't know actually if this is a if this is a Chinese film or not. I'm not sure. Again, Miramax. Maybe they distributed it. I don't know. 
I, I really have no knowledge of this as far as where it sits in his career. And, you know, yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Anyway, it's Jackie Chan. I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to enjoy it regardless. This one uh, is where we get into some really good savings, I think, considering this you know, came up to five pounds. It is the Arrow Academy release of a film by uh, Mano Olmi. This is the tree of wooden clocks. Again, a, a film from the Thousand More Movies You Must See Before You Die book. Don't know much, too much about it, but it's one of those things where it's a nice addition. It's Arrow Academy. If I don't like it, I can sell it on to someone who would really like it. But it's a nice weighty Blu-ray. I like it when they feel weighty and substantial. There's obviously a booklet in here. And a couple of special features. Nothing too substantial, but there is a 4K restoration. This came out very recently, actually. I think it was maybe oh, 2017, so came out in the past couple of years. It is a three-hour plus movie. It is Italian, so going to be a bit of a challenging one, but a challenge I am willing to accept. Another Arrow release. This is a one I've always wanted to get since I first saw it uh, quite a few years ago. And I was doing it as part of my, you know, watching horror films during October and trying to, you know, watch the films I don't normally watch. And this one really, um, really drew me in, mainly because of my love of the actor Peter Cushing, The Hound of the Baskervilles. And this is the, only, the one and only time I've experienced the story, period, in any form of media. So it was really fun to discover the story for the first time through the lens of Peter Cushing playing... Sherlock Holmes, and uh, the cast is great, Christopher Lee is in this, really, really cool looking, uh, it's got to be a Hammer production, yes it is, and this one looks to be loaded with special features, most of, most of which I probably will never get to, but there is a 1986 documentary looking at the many incarnations of Sherlock Holmes, uh, narrated and presented by Christopher Lee, that sounds like a really good uh, special feature actually. Uh, as well as an interview with Christopher Lee, uh, excerpts of Hound of the Baskervilles read by Christopher Lee. Okay, I actually might get to these special features. These are really cool. Uh, I would have liked to have seen an interview with um, Peter Cushing on it, of course, but uh, it is what it is. But yeah, definitely one that I, I really love. It's probably my favorite Hammer film that I've seen. I haven't seen many of them. Then again, Dracula is pretty good. Um, and there's another one that Peter Cushing has done that I think is fantastic. But yeah, one of my favorites anyway. So really, really love that film. And happy to pick it up for £5. It's like nothing. This is probably my favorite buy of the whole box. And it is a recent release, which I was more than willing to wait a few years for because I knew this would go down to 5 or £6. But it is a brand new release. So to get it this cheap was really just a no-brainer. It is my favorite film of 2018. Sebastian Lelio's Disobedience with Rich McAdams and Rachel Weiss, and also uh, Alessandro Nivola who plays Dovid who is fantastic. So this is a film about uh, two women who are reunited after a very long time. Uh, we have Rachel McAdams who plays Ronit who grew up in a Jewish family. Her father was a very notable and established rabbi in the Jewish community in London and she comes out as, you know, being lesbian. Her father kind of uh, doesn't like this very much, so she leaves and moves to America. Comes back after many years when her father, the rabbi, dies and uh, is reunited with her childhood friends, David, and what is Rachel McAdams' character? Esty. So Esty is Rachel McAdams' character. And they had a bit of a romance, a bit of a fling when they were younger. And it's about them kind of rekindling that spark between them even though Esty is now married to Dovid. So this kind of love triangle going on between these three people who grew up together in the Jewish community and just about these women who have been denied happiness for so long. And it, it dives into that kind of uh, regimented um, way of, of things that can sometimes happen when you're in a community that is so set in its ways uh, to the effect of Esty being married to Dovid and not wanting to be, perhaps and a phenomenal film. I, on the surface, not a film I think that is terribly exciting or one that I thought would be particularly fantastic, but I was so drawn into this, it made me cry at the end, which is a very rare thing, and I just thought that it was a phenomenal film, and both lead actresses are just incredible, so I think there's a couple of interviews, nothing too substantial on the special features, but absolutely had to own this at some point and I might even watch it at some point this year which is how much I liked it that I would actually watch it again so soon. 
Uh, next up we have a another weighty, nice weighty release here. This is spine number 162 of the Masters of Cinema collection, uh, sourced from a new 4K restoration, Cover Girl. Not the biggest musical fan, <laughs> but it does have Rita Hayworth and Gene Kelly, which just seems like a really cool combination. Haven't seen much of Gene Kelly, I know how much of a legend that he is, and Rita Hayworth, you know, Gilda. Fantastic, just legendary performance, and so I haven't really seen her in much else, I think. What was that one film I saw of her? Uh, she was in Lady of Shanghai, right? Am I getting that wrong? And I think if she was, she was great in that, but regardless, I'm aware of her and her talents. So I know nothing about this other than it is, of course, a musical, uh, one of the most lavish and successful Hollywood musicals of the 1940s. So yeah, there's not really any special features on this one, really, but another one to fill out the massive cinema collection. And, you know, at one point I definitely will watch this and make a video on it. Though that could be many, many years from now. Next, we have another kind of box standard studio release, but it's one that I definitely needed to add to my Tim Burton collection. Edward, what a film. I, I watched this on DVD years ago and thought it was fantastic. I'd always heard of it, like in school people used to talk about this. It just seemed so boring because <laughs> literally when I was a teenager, oh, black and white, ugh, you know. But it put me off, and I finally kind of just sat down and watched it when I was about 16, 17, and what a film. If you love movies and Hollywood and uh, eccentric characters, this film is for you. Uh, Johnny Depp, fantastic as Edward, you know, a uh, legendary filmmaker who made some of the worst films of all time, but his passion and enthusiasm and uh, just kind of... Um, vibrancy and uh, excitement over making films is so infectious and even though he's making these terrible films you kind of go along with you know the the, <laughs> the monstrosities that he's making and it's a fantastic cast um, uh, Martin Landau who plays Bella Lugosi is just wonderful in the film he is so he won an Academy Award for that and we also have Bill Murray who is so I don't want to say un-Bill Murray-like, but usually in Bill, Bill Murray performances, he turns up, he's Bill Murray, for, for all intents and purposes. Not to say he's not a good actor, he's a great actor, but uh, I just think that he... I really felt like he, he was getting stretched a bit. Uh, not in a bad way, like, I feel like he went outside his comfort zone a little bit for this film, and it just... it was really memorable, and the, the way that it shot with the black and white, it's just a, an excellent film, so yeah, definitely had to grab it and add it to my Tim Burton collection. Big fan of Tim Burton. And finally, we have two more. I'll go with the the last standard release. And it is another film from the Thousand One Movies book. I don't think there's any special features on this one, but it is a fairly lengthy movie. At 192 minutes, with a pretty damn good cast. Uh, Sam Shepard, Dennis Quaid, uh, Ed Harris, who I love. It is the right stuff. So I'm not sure which mission this is, but it's uh, an astronaut historical drama about the training of astronauts before a certain mission. Let's have a look at the back. Um, the first person to fly faster than the speed of sound, um, continuing with the flying fraternity and the Mercury astronauts, the first Americans to go to space. There we go. I knew, I knew it wasn't related to the moon landing, so it's more of the um, just getting out of the atmosphere of, of Earth, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so who's this? This is uh, written for the screen and directed by Philip Kaufman. And yeah, like I said, fantastic cast. Veronica Cartwright also, who uh, is really good. Uh, Lance Henriksen, had no idea he was in this. Wow. So yeah, this is one I definitely need to check out. Love space movies or astronaut movies. So this is definitely a blind spot for me in terms of the, that genre of films. And then finally, we have a f another film from the Masters of Cinema Collection, spine number 149. I, I got a, a screener disc for this from Eureka, and I reviewed it a few years ago, which is why I haven't rushed to buy this, but I definitely wanted to buy it just to get the case and the booklet and everything. And it is a film I absolutely love by Robert Aldrich. It is The Flight of the Phoenix, starring um, you know, the one and only um, James Stewart and Richard Attenborough, who is phenomenal in the film. There's a scene between James Stewart and Richard Attenborough in this film that was just so moving to me, and what a rousing film, and, and, and what a, a unique film. I, I don't know, I've, I've never seen anything quite like it, even though there are many films like it, where characters get stuck in one position, in one location, and they have to survive. It's a survival movie. 
these guys go down in a plane in the middle of the desert and they've got to try and rebuild the plane and there's I think there's a German guy on board and so there's kind of there's kind of this tension between them and stuff but they've got to work together and they've got to make it out alive and it and James Stewart is fantastic and as you would imagine but it is just who's who's that guy who I love he's a really good actor Ernest Borgnine he is so good in this film as well all the cast are great but I think James Stewart and Richard Attenborough in particular really stand out so this is yeah, I'm, I'm really just excited to have this in my collection properly with a, a nice case and everything. But this, I love this film set. It's a gorgeous piece of cover art on the front as well. So there we go. That was the the 10 Blu-rays that I picked up from Chile. Uh, I, I will hope that they don't do another 50% off everything deal again because I might be tempted to stray and, and buy more Blu-rays. But I think I did pretty good considering the, the amount that were there. I tried to go for things I really wanted. Uh, a mix of films I have seen and know that I love, and also some some good deals on like the boutique label stuff. So, quite a good little selection of things. I know people have been getting like loads of indicator releases, and yeah, it's a very. It almost seems like a scam to be honest. And my invoice, my invoice. I should. Uh, no, nah, I'll leave it. But I could show you it on camera. My invoice for these ten titles came to seven hundred and fifty-eight pounds. <laughs> Which is just like, what are they doing over there? I don't understand it. I almost feel like I have ripped them off or something because they've got all these great Blu-rays at half price and then they're sending out invoices for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds more than the actual value. I checked my PayPal to make sure it was all in order, but yeah, very strange. But there we go. That was my, my Blu-ray update from Chile. And that's actually not all. Should I, should I throw in a few more? Because I actually bought a few things in HMV and Poundland. Wait there just a second. Now this is actually a, a point of shame, I think, for myself that I should really um, uh, broadcast to the world. Um, in HMV I bought one Blu-ray and I also saw this on the, the front um, stand at the tills and I thought, oh, I'll buy that, I really like that film and I, I should own it. Hellboy, 4 99 Gorgeous cover artwork, that's what really drew me to it. Looked on the back, I was like, oh, all these special features. I already have it. I bought it like five years ago and I got a really nice steelbook of it, so that'll be going back to HMV for a full refund. Uh, the actual film I bought from HMV was Steam Boy, which my cousin actually recommended to me. She's into anime films and she was, uh, uh, we, we were kind of sending pictures back and forth of the anime films we own and she said, uh, have you seen Steam Boy? It's really good. That was enough for me, so I saw this in HMV and thought I will give that a look. Apparently it's from the same director as Akira, and took uh, over 10 years in the making. Don't know what that means exactly, but regardless, it looks pretty cool. I love the kind of steampunk aesthetic, so uh, and it says it in the title pretty much, so you'd expect that that's the kind of uh, vibe they're going for, but looking forward to checking that out. And I did spot a few... Um, Blu-rays in Poundland, so I thought I'd grab a few that um, piqued my interest. There were, there were loads that I left, which I was quite happy with myself, that I didn't kind of needlessly buy things, but we got Paranormal Activity, which I really love. Every time I watch it again, I'm like, I really like this film. It's really well done. I quite like the the, 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 the two sequels, two and three. Uh, three particularly, I really like, but yeah, this is a really, really good film, and I think it does have an audio commentary, which I'd be really interested to, to listen to, so... Uh, yeah, I actually really like that film, so definitely thought I would grab it for two pounds. This one might be one of those ones I watch and then sell, but I I wanted to watch it when it came out. It's a Steven Soderbergh film, Contagion. Just the cast alone really is like you know Marion Cotillard, Matt Damon, Lawrence Fishburne, Jude Law, Gwyneth Paltrow, Kate Winslet. Fantastic cast, so I'll definitely check that out at some point. <sighs> this is another buy of shame, I think. Um, I don't think I'll ever watch this, but I wanted the black case. It is Jason Statham in Wildcard. Extended edition, fuck me. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, hmm. I, I, I probably will never watch this. I wanted the black case. What can I say? Again, it, it's, it's another buy of shame for me. And uh, we've been kind of talking about this throughout the past few Blu-ray updates, but I had recently picked up Taken and Taken 2. I think I bought them Taken 2, then Taken, and now we have Taken 3. So I haven't seen this one, same as the, the sequel, so maybe one day I'll do a, a trilogy marathon viewing. It seems like the disc is loose. 
or there's like a slip inside perhaps, but yeah, the, <laughs> the extended harder cut. They, they really need to work on those. Um, so, yeah. It says there's two versions of the film, so I'll probably just watch the theatrical. I don't think I'm ready for the extended version of Taken 3. I'm not going to say guilty pleasure, because I'm not guilty for enjoying them, but... You know, I, I enjoy them, even though they're not particularly great. All the, the Taken, the first Taken, like the non-stop, uh, the grey, the commuter, you know. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the Liam Neeson on a boat action movie. And finally, I thought I would buy this one. Aha! I'm Alan Partridge, the classic, original, you know, sitcom series. Obviously not the first Alan Partridge series, but the first, uh, you know, multi-camera sitcom. So this is just an absolutely classic series, and I definitely... Uh, should have had this sooner, but it just is what it is, and I'm a huge Alan Partridge fan. So there we go, that is everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Apart from the fact he throws cans and call it into a tree. Yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you, because...